Um, went to the Taylor Swift show. Incredible. Truly production, 100 out of 10. It was so amazing. And I, you know, I'm supporting women in the arts. I wanted to see it. I love the new album. I just said, let's go. Let's fucking let it rip. We were on the right side of the stage, which is 100% the way to do it. And I mean, I will say the camaraderie, the joy, uh, really there were a lot of all ages there. Um, there were older couples that went, there were young children, there were bachelorette parties, there's a gaggle of gay men who were there to just, you know, sing their faces off. It really was a, a very broad community. I loved that everybody had the friendship bracelets. I brought mine and I thought, I don't even think I have that many friendship bracelets, but I have so many knickknacks and trinkets that y'all have brought me on my tour over the years. I had a full sleeve. I had a full fucking sleeve of all of our phrases. Meet me at the Beverly Center. Absolutely not. Uh, tiramisu, bitch. Uh, live, laugh, love. Like everything that we've ever said, I had a full sleeve and I was trying to hand them out and people were like, I don't know who you are. This, this, <laughs> this friendship bracelet means nothing to me. Why are you breathing so heavy on me? Ma'am, how many beers have you had? And I was like, please take my friendship bracelet. I'm underage. Walk away. Like just, you know, I, with the friendship bracelet at the concert, you do also have to make sure they are wanted. You can't just roll up and start slapping bracelets on people's wrists. They're like, I don't know who the fuck you are. But of course, I was trying to do my own branding and get the word out about the podcast at, the, you know, always hustling, always hustling, always marketing. There was a couple in front of us. I would say they were in their mid-50s, slender, slim man, uh, had kind of a hiking gear look on. He had a nice pair of some sort of grippy, mountain-esque sneaker. Uh, I think they're called trail shoes, if you will. Uh, fanny pack, cargo, khaki pants, a nice windbreaker because it was a little rainy, you know, per usual, per London. And he was with a woman that could only be described as, you know, Martha from Baby Reindeer. Uh, Susan Boyle, if you will, okay? Google both of those names. And this will give you an exact, exact picture of what this woman looked like. So slender older man, uh, 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 Susan Boyle from uh, America's Got Talent. Or what, what was she on? She was on the, fa the Factor, the X Factor, one of those shows. God, where's Susan Boyle been? I know the fa the fame didn't do her well. If you don't know, this woman is, you know, a little bit more of a homely presence. And she sang and blew everybody away. I mean, this woman has like an operatic trained voice. And then I know the, the, the lights and the cameras, they just kind of threw her in a tailspin. And I, don't, I, I feel like she had a 15 minutes of fame and then it was too much. So thinking of you, Susan. But anyways, I haven't seen a real thick gal and a slender man get this emotional, this lovey-dovey. I mean, she was spooning him. He was standing in front of her. Uh, you know, she put her hands kind of underneath his fanny pack. There could have been a little foreplay going on there that I couldn't see. I wasn't trying to see it. But, man, there was a lot of kissing on the neck. He would turn around. I mean, I was standing right next to these people. I'm about an edible in and about three Stella Artois. And the things that they were saying to each other, I love you so much. This is so magical. You're my baby. No, you're my baby. And Hayden, Jared, and I are sitting back just soaking it in. And I turned to them and I said, God, love is beautiful, isn't it? This is beautiful. They weren't there with kids. And I said, listen, if, they're, if their kids aren't somewhere out in this crowd, they're making a baby tonight. And I don't know if she's fertile. She seemed probably in the in the menopause window. But man, if they weren't going to try hard. And then, so I kind of like lean over to look, get a better gaze at them. He's writing detailed notes. Now, I don't know if this guy was a journalist. He was writing such specific notes. He's like, this was her acoustic song. When she came out, she had different shoes on. She wore the pink top and the green skirt for this number. Da -da -da -da. Like, it was like Rain Man writing a manifesto about all the different production changes for the show. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe he's a secret shopper. Maybe he's a journalist. Does he work for Rolling Stones? I needed to know more. I was this close, this close to asking to go home with them. And did I want to get naked with them? No, but I wanted to know more. I wanted to know more. The people watching alone at the Taylor Swift concert was truly just absolutely a, a wet dream for me.
And I loved seeing uh, Taylor just fucking knock it out of the park. It was really empowering. And when she came out on stage, you know, the, the crowd erupts and they go nuts and she's getting emotional and she's feeling all the feels. And I started to cry because she she grabs a mic and she's like, just so you guys know, there's like 90,000 of y'all here tonight and the crowd goes wild. And I want you to know that, of course, I'm going to somehow make this about myself. But that is the exact same feeling I have felt when I've walked out on stage at Radio City, when I walked out in the Chicago theater. <laughs> you know, it's like 5,000 people. And I'm like, I can't handle my emotions. Sobbed. Sobbed. I sobbed when I got off the stage when I shot my first special in Kentucky. And that was only for like 1,000 people. I'm like, I, I can't believe this is my life. So... It was cool being another entertainer and like seeing it through the lens of her eyes and the success she's had. And I just, it was a really cool experience. And then I'm seeing two people just absolutely dialed in, madly in love, grinding on each other while he's writing a, some sort of dissertation about Taylor. And I'm like, look at this. You know, we're eat, pray, loving. 